Hello and welcome back to The Reasonable Businessman. This channel is where I try and explain business concepts in a way that most people can understand to be useful. If you're a student, this may help, it may not. It's not my goal. My goal is not to help students learn the textbook version. My goal is to help people learn the actual information and the actual concepts so that they can apply them. Having that said, this is a very informal. You're gonna see I've got my dry erase board. It's gonna be some chicken scratch on there. That's okay. I'm here to decide the information. So today, we're going to be going over Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs and comparing that to Herzberg's Hygiene Theory. I'm going over this because I just tutored a student yesterday and he could not grasp uh, the differences between them, where the similarities are. He was writing an essay and he's trying to write all of Maslow's theory and then when he finishes that, try and go through Herzberg's and he felt like he was repeating himself, felt like he didn't have enough information to say new things and that was all true because they're not different ideas. They're very correlated, and I would say they bounce off of each other. So that's what we're going over today. Now, if you don't know Maslow's hierarchy of needs, here's my chicken scratch on what it is. Uh, it's usually done in a pyramid, and it starts out, you have your self-actualization is most important, your esteem, uh, belonging, and love, safety, and physiological. I'm not gonna make you stare at my uh, handwriting anymore. So, going through, what does that mean? Well, the basic um, need, from the pyramid you have to start with your pyramid and build up you cannot skip a level uh, it will not work if you go to someone who's living in a cave and try and get them self-actualization it's never going to work you have to start at the bottom and work your way up so first thing physiological uh, and this is true for anybody whenever you have need your first needs are going to be your food your water um, all of those things you need food you need to eat you need to sleep and um, all that so that's your physiological in the business sense that becomes the paycheck Fundamentally, you have what you need to survive. Uh, moving that on to safety, in terms of uh, sociology, the original theory, that was you need somewhere to sleep, uh, you need somewhere that you can be safe, so you don't have that, that panic, fight or flight all the time. You need to be able to move, um, you need to be able to relax a little bit. And if you think, once again, of caveman, you know, before they found caves, when they're just wandering around, they hear an owl in the night, they get too scared, so that second need before you can enjoy anything else is to be somewhere safe. In a business sense, that turns into job security, that turns into a golden parachute, um, some type of retirement fund. You need to know that your supervisors have you have your back. Um, so even though you may be getting a paycheck and you can eat and you can feed, you can provide, if you're worried day in, day out that you're gonna lose your job, it's not gonna help, it's not gonna be good. Uh, so that's the second need. The third need, belonging and love. Uh, this is when we start moving into the more emotional needs, obviously. Uh, so in the sociological need, that's the, you need to be taken care of, you need to have someone to care for, uh, you need to have that inner relationship. You know, we are herd animals, um, so, so we need that to work together. In a business sense, that is corporate culture. That is the, the buy-in, you know, drink the Kool-Aid, all these buzzwords you'll hear. You need to be able to work with people who accept you, um, who like working with you, who don't feel like you're the oddball. Um, usually that's hard if you're the new guy. That's why they, they want to prevent hazing, although that's why hazing exists. If you go into a new job and they you know put a goose in your locker or whatever it is, that joke, um, those are ways that they break the ice to allow you to belong. That's the way they kind of indoctrinate you into their culture. Um, some companies are great at it. Google has their Googlers, you have the Facebook, you have the Amazonians, um, the, even um, HP, you had the HP Way. Great companies, when they get past the paycheck and then, okay, yeah, we have job security, whatever, the great companies move forward and have that good business culture. And a lot of businesses have that now. What we're trying to move forward into, make more standard, is the esteem. Um, obviously, for um, the sociology and esteem is uh, admiration from your peers. Uh, that's pretty pretty self-explanatory. When you have people you love, you have a family, you have a community, you have all those things, and then getting the respect from those individuals uh, is the next need. In the business sense, pretty directly correlated. You have your coworkers, you have your managers, you have those you look up to. Uh, this business need becomes the the reward in public, you know, critique in private. Um, it becomes the promotion, it becomes the major, uh, the big titles, you know, the, the assistant coordinator to the vice president's duplicated, whatever it is. Uh, that's where those come in, that's that esteem need. So people make fun of those, but that is a need, and that's just a really higher need that 
a lot of people haven't reached yet because most companies aren't taking care of this. Moving that into self-actualization. That is, as far as we understand right now with our psychology, that is the height. That is the, the tip of the pyramid, and that is what everyone aspires to eventually. That self-actualization is the completely engaged employee. Um, for for the psychology or sociology, that's typically the, the hero, right? Someone comes back, everyone loves them, uh, they're proud of what they've all done themselves. Uh, very much the reflective, you know, yeah, people love you, um, but you're proud of it yourself. You, it's, you've been told it so many times and you believe it so much that you, you've taken it to yourself. And that is very directly business correlated. Um, you know, there's a lot of CEOs, a lot of great leaders who still don't have the confidence, who still don't believe they are as great as they may be. Self-actualization is when you become great and then you realize how great you are. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Herzberg's, a lot simpler. I know that's already been five minutes or six minutes into the video, but Herzberg's, you have two. You have the um, hygiene theory and then the motivators theory. Basically, that's motivators and demotivators. Uh, so, getting back into my little um, chart here, Maslow breaks his down a little bit farther into the first two. Let me get this. Okay, so first two are basic needs. And yes, I do realize this is crappy. Don't care. Okay, so basic needs, right? Food, safety, you've heard that before. Then you get into the next two are the psychological. I'm just going to put P-H-S-Y-C-H. Probably spell that right. But psychological needs are the next two. And then the final one that we're trying to get to is self-fulfillment. I'm just going to put self-full. You fool. Dinner. Okay, so break it down. Ultimately simple. Um, you have all of those five pyramids break down into three right now. You have... Uh, Herzberg's is basic. You have hygiene, which actually, you know what? I'm going to put demotivators because that makes more sense. I don't know why he called it. I know why he called it hy hygiene, but I don't like it as much. Uh, it's very limiting. So demotivator, and you have motivator. So what's the correlation between these two items? Well, very simply, Yeah, right there. Half of Maslow's theory. You may want to say, you know, up to here, the upper, you know, some, some people said the upper half, some people say it's the top three. But uh, Herzberg was saying that these three bottom here, your demotivators, your hygiene theory, these three are the cause that people become unmotivated. They're not what motivates people. The top two or top two and a half are what motivates people. So what does that mean? If you have your base pay, that's going to incentivize someone to work, but it's not going to motivate them any farther. It's going to allow them to exist there. You have your safety, okay, your job security, cool. They're going to be there, they're going to work, that's it. Uh, your belonging and love, that, depending on how well it's done, if it's simply an acceptance, no one hates you at work, okay. But if you get into, you know, a team mindset, and this is why a lot of people have said it's at the top of that third tier, but I'm going to say it's in the middle because a lot of our, our belonging is now becoming more than it used to be. So your belonging into a culture is drinking that Kool-Aid. Um, and those are the things that will motivate you to become more. Now, if you're just, you know, working at a place and they accept you, that's going to, uh, that's the demotivator. So if they accept you, great. But if those don't exist, it will demotivate you. So the existence doesn't motivate, but the lack of demotivates. That's why it's called a hygiene. That's why it's called a demotivator. Uh, the hygiene came in because if you don't have food, you don't have safety, you don't have those. In terms of sociology, those physically um, announce themselves as hygiene issues. Uh, you don't have food. You don't have cleanliness. You don't have a place to sleep. You don't have um, you know, your own soap, shower, a place to take care of yourself. That's why it's called hygiene because you physically lose your ability to maintain hygiene. So once again, having the physiological needs... You know, having the base paycheck, having the job security, and having the basic acceptance into a work group does not motivate, but the lack of those demotivates. That's Herzberg. The other half of Herzberg is the top half, um, having that corporate culture where you're buying into the Kool-Aid, 
uh, you're drinking the Kool-Aid, buying into the culture. You have the esteem from your peers and your supervisors, and then the self-actualization. The lack of those will not demotivate, but the existence of will motivate. So that starts in the center and shoots out. And that's why people get confused because Maslow starts here and builds up. Um, Herzberg starts in the center and breaks out. So you're starting in the center. Some things will demotivate you or leave you blank. Some things will motivate you or leave you blank. And that's where the separation is. And that correlation is right in the center. That center point of um, Herzberg's is also the center point of Maslow's. Hopefully that was understood. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. Of course, this is YouTube, so subscri subscriptions are nice, all of that. Uh, I'm not going to try and sell anyone on it, but always appreciate it. Uh, and if you know anyone who would benefit from a general conversation like I have, my style, please let them know to look at my page. If you have any questions, I, I know a lot of these theories. I'm really weird about that. Um, please let me know any questions you have about business, finance, um, statistics, any of those. And I'd be happy to break them down for you. Have a good one.